you have an idea of what you're looking for, but when someone can surprise you, it's really, uh, you're grateful to that. I mean, I think that's what happened with Amanda. There was, you know, um, there were a lot of people that we saw that were really great, but they were, um, you could imagine how they would work through the whole movie, but there was something with Amanda where you just go, oh, well, that just sets off so many scenes in ways I hadn't thought of before. And so it was surprising. And uh, it, it, it really, um, it, it was just an intuitive response to something that she was offering. And I think that what she says, and it's probably the last movie where she got cast entirely because of her um, qualities as an actor. It's, she wasn't a star at the time. She was just, you know, someone who came in. And she, she really was uh, just, um, she came in for an audition. There was just something about her. She wasn't the most uh, beautiful young woman we saw. She wasn't like, you know, the one that you would think was the most obvious choice, but there was something about her. And you that reacted. she was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want me to, I have a question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing that I've noticed with work that I write is that uh, the more idiosyncratic the actress, the better. And, I mean, Amanda herself is an, an incredibly playful, yeah. idiosyncratic, um, Happy ironic, yeah. happy, um, passionate person, as is Maggie Gyllenhaal, and you can look at James Spader too. You know that the, the, these people know how to to do the characters that I write, which are walking a line. That is it funny? Is it tragic? You know, you're not even quite sure what it is. Um, and um, and Amanda certainly had that. And then she has, to me, this face. Um, you know, that's kissed by heaven, these, these, these eyes and this mouth yeah. that, that reflect back our fantasies. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, so many beautiful women came in that day, dolled up. Yeah, it was uh, the dolling up that was kind of distracting, I yeah. think, right? Yeah, and you yeah. know, she came in with no makeup. Yeah. Uh, you know, I didn't look like she'd washed her hair for a little while. <laughs> um, some <laughs> some um, not so great clothing, and she and she just grabbed us because she can act. <laughs> you know, she just acted it. You know, look, the the exercise with this movie was basically whenever I felt an authorial sort of impulse, I just I just smothered it. I just kind of went, okay, you know what? This is I'm here to direct this script, and uh, I'm going to do the best job I can. You know, and. If I if I go with, oh this is the type of shot I would like I'm just gonna like not do it I'm just gonna like you know it, and it's really about servicing what this story was about and uh, I think that uh, that was the challenge really it was not to kind of do things which this story didn't need um, uh, and to keep it simple to keep it really it, it's shot a lot um, you know it, it, it's it's classically shot really it's it's not it's not you know they're not really these long lingering masters that I would normally use and I mean when I'm making my own scripts I'm very aware of the fact that these are you know these are units in time that are going to be changed and and so there has to be kind of a spatial integrity within the scene which allows that otherwise it becomes very cluttered but that's not the case with a film like this it's 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 operating in a, on a very different rhythm and it has to be more malleable just because of the nature of the performances so it's as I said at the beginning, it's a different skill set almost. It's like it, it's a different switch you put on. Well, thank you, Adam and Aaron, thank for you. making Chloe. Thank you. Chloe thank opens you. on March 26th.